Hi guys, welcome back to Metabox Tutorial. Today, we are going to learn about how to create category thumbnails and featured images for your WordPress website. Here I have a demo website about traveling. This section is the list of my categories. Each category is about a travel destination. You see, each one has its own thumbnail. By the way, on the archive page, I also have a featured image on the top. Both of the category thumbnail and this featured image are got from the same source. Here it is, I've made two custom fields to input images for the category. Although this is an image from an external place, I still get it to be a featured image for my category. Let's find out how. This is the top destination section for showing the list of categories before my executing. And, here is the archive page. The featured image is missing as well. To have them, we need a custom field to save data of the image we want for each category. As I showed you a moment ago, that's where the Metabox plugin comes in handy. So, here I have it, the free version, which you can download from WordPress.org. The next one is Metabox AIO. It's available for those who have the developer or lifetime licenses. In case you haven't had it yet, you can get individual extensions that I'm appointing here. This is the list of extensions that are available in the Metabox AIO. Make sure you activated these ones. First, MB custom post type and custom taxonomy in case you are doing this for a custom post type instead. I'm doing with blog posts, so do not use this extension. Next, this MB term meta extension allows you to create custom fields for categories or taxonomies. MB views to get data and display values of custom fields in the front end. In this case, the images I put in the fields. And the last one, the most wanted extension, Metabox Builder. It provides you an intuitive UI right in the admin dashboard to create fields. That's all about Metabox. Here I have Smart Slider, please skip it. It is just to create the slider on the homepage and do not relevant to this tutorial. That's all we need. Here we go. I have pre-made a field group for this tutorial. There are two custom fields here. One is URL, and one is single image for image uploading. There is no special in settings of them. In case you haven't been familiar with creating custom fields using Metabox, we have a video tutorial on it. You can choose to use one of these fields or both like I did here. It doesn't matter. The URL field allows you to put links from any website so that your site will not carry those images. Otherwise, the single image field allows you to upload images to the media library. It may have a faster loading speed, but, if you have a significant number of categories or you need high quality images, that sounds not good for your server. One more thing, you must pay attention to the IDs of the fields. We will use them in the next steps. So, let it be something easy to recall and distinguish. Finally, in the settings tab of the field group, Remember to set the location as taxonomy and category here to assign these fields for categories. Then, go to a category editor page, you will see the fields. Here is for adding an URL. And here, is for choosing an image from the media library or upload one. On an editor page of another category as well. And, another. I filled in the URLs for all of them instead of uploading images. Let's see how I display them on the front end. Back to the home page. This is the top destination section where the list of the categories displayed earlier. We will make it reappear by using MB views. Go to views. Create a new view. In the template tab, type the code. I usually paste code like this. That may make you confuse. But it is just to save time for typing. To get full of the code I used in this tut, please go to the blog post that I put the link in this video description. Back to this view, this is to know which category is getting data. Here I create some classes for styling later. The loop of getting categories starts from here. This is to get the link of the corresponding category by ID. At the same time, display the category name and hyperlink it. These two lines of code are for getting values of the fields from the corresponding category. Of course, just the fields which have these IDs. This is where we need the IDs of fields as I said before. The values will be assigned to the corresponding variables that are image upload and image URL. Because I have two custom fields that all can be thumbnails, while a category can have only one thumbnail. So, 
I have to set a rule to choose just one. If the image upload variable has any value, it means that I uploaded an image. In this event, this variable will receive the value which is the link of the uploaded image of the corresponding category. Then, from that link, display it. Otherwise, means I didn't upload any image for that category, the image URL variable will be considered. If it has any value, means that I saved a link to the field, this code will display that image. For the last case, I did neither insert a link nor upload an image, this code will display a default image which I chose by this link. In the settings section, choose shortcode. So that this view will auto-generate a shortcode, you can use this shortcode to easily display the list of the category with thumbnails everywhere you want. It seems like simplify the process a lot. Back to my homepage to edit it. Paste the shortcode here. And, here they are. The images and titles of the categories. Easy. But, they are oversized and look not good. Let's style them. However, instead of using customizer, I will use MB views once again. Back to the view, go to the CSS tab. Add any code you want to style the section created by this view. See, these are the classes I created before. Save. Then, the difference happens. So, we have done it on the home page. Let's move on. This is an archive page. And, it's time to display the featured image here. We will touch the theme file to change the template of the archive page. So, go to the archive.php file. Each theme will have its own structure for the template, but we normally should insert code for the featured images right after the get header section in the first div tag. This line also is to know which category is displayed. For the next one, I set a new variable to receive data from the field which I used to upload an image for that category. Do the same with the last part of displaying the list of categories on the homepage, here I have a rule. If this variable has any value, means that I uploaded an image for that category. This variable, link image, will receive the link of that image. Then, assign the value to a new variable named link image source. In the event that I haven't uploaded any image yet for that category, the link image source variable will be assigned a value that is the link I put in the URL field of that category. In both cases, this variable will have a value, no matter what I uploaded an image or insert a URL to the fields. Then, this line will display the image from its value. As you can see, I also have some classes here for styling later. Update the template, then go back to the archive page. Refresh it and we have this. Do you want to prettify this section? Okay, let's try some CSS. Go to the style.css file in the theme folder. Then, use the classes that I have created to style the featured image. I style it with a diagonal. By the way, change the style of the category title and description as well. Back to an archive page. A little bit graceful is my style. Hope you find it beautiful. Do you want to see some other categories looks? Here they are the same template. What do you think? If you find this tutorial helpful, like this video and subscribe to our channel for more upcoming tutorials. Bye.